I guess you can go ahead and start recording, Brother Dan. Um, if you have your Bibles, we're going to read just a quick passage, Romans 1 and 17. Amen. Romans 1 and 17. For in the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Lord, in the precious holy name of Jesus, God, I pray for a breakthrough of barriers in our faith right now here today. God, I ask, Lord, that you would do a working from heaven, Lord, a mingling of your word and the power of your spirit, God, to go out here today and to release that which is good in your sight, God. Lord, would you expand some borders of faith here today, God. Lord, would you loose the power of faith in this house today, God. Lord, would you take us from where we're at right now, God, and bring us to a place much deeper in you, God, where our faith won't fail, God. Lord, we give you the praise and the glory. Amen. Could we give the Lord just a shout, Lord? We give you praise, Jesus. God, we lift up your name, Jesus. Amen. Do you how many of you believe in the power in the name of Jesus? There is power in the name. Amen. I can just speak that name and faith is being released right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Look to your neighbor here today and say, you about to have a breakthrough. Amen. And you can be seated. <clears throat> Amen. As Christians, we all desire to be successful in what God has called us to do. And I can tell you that without faith, it's impossible to please God. And faith is the, is the one currency in God's economy that will always cash the check. Amen. Faith is the one thing that will break you through the barriers and the resisting forces that all the world, the enemy in your flesh, want to throw your way. Amen. It's faith. Amen. That'll get you through it. Amen. Whenever things start shaking and everything seems like it's turning upside down, it's not time to tuck tail and run. It's time to pray and stir up the gift within you and release that word of faith. Amen. Faith will break through the barriers. It'll break through the resisting forces. Amen. Faith will bring heaven's desires a reality on earth. Amen. I want to give you a few keys here uh, to having faith and having the kind of faith that you can live by. We, the Bible says in our opening text that we, the just shall live by faith. And it says that from faith to faith. Now, there's been a lot of situations in my life. There's been places where I can definitely look back and say, uh, when God brought me through that, my faith was at a whole different dimension. It, I, could, I could tell you stories. I could just skip all the Bible study tonight and just tell you stories about from faith to faith where all the troubles and all the hell that came at me and how God worked it out to the good so that when I broke through to the other side, my faith was at a deeper dimension and God's glory and purpose and will was being released in greater and deeper ways. Amen. God is always wanting to do more. He's always wanting to do more. And, uh, you know, a lot of times we have not because we ask not. You know, we like to pray these little safe little prayers, you know. I want to ask God to do something that I know is easy for him to do, right? We don't want to challenge God, right? Really what it is, we don't want to challenge our faith is what it is. But God is always wanting you to exercise your faith. That's why it says from faith to faith in Romans 1 and 17. But um, there's times in our lives where we need a sort of faith without boundaries to break through into that next level that God wants to take us to. The Bible is just loaded with examples of this. And um, God always reveals himself in a greater way in these moments. And it happened to Abraham when God asked him to sacrifice his son Isaac. The thing, the very earthly thing that he loved the most, God was wanting it on that altar. And by his great offering, his sacrifice, uh, his willingness to uh, obey God and to trust God, and, to, and God's seen the confidence that he had in him. 
And God was able to manifest himself in, in one of the greatest ways humanity had ever seen up to that moment. God declared some things in that moment. And um, it happened when Job had lost everything, including his health. He had a breakthrough in his faith. Before then, he said, before all the trouble, he said, I'd heard of you, Lord, but now I see you with my eyes. It wasn't until all that trouble that Job could intercede for some friends that had sold him out. And um, it happened to Noah when God asked him to build an ark. I'm sure 120 years of hard labor building an ark was not a fun and easy thing to do. But God told Noah to do it. And by faith, Noah built an ark. And because he built an ark, he had a breakthrough. Amen. He, break, he broke through the biggest storm that this earth had ever seen up to that moment. Amen. He broke through the mighty flood waters. He broke through not alone, but with his family as well. Amen. And on the other side, he's seen God's promise of a new covenant, a rainbow stretched forth across the horizon. Amen. Amen. But there was a lot of storms. There was a lot of hard work. There was a lot of challenging moments that brought him up to that breakthrough. Amen. But he trusted God, and he knew that the, 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 the bigger the challenge and the more the resistance, that the greater the breakthrough and the greater the blessing was going to be on the other side. Amen? Hell will give you confirmation every time of God's blessings that's coming down, things that you can't see in the spiritual realm. Amen? Before the blessing hits, it's always the trouble. It's always the trial. It's always the challenges. Amen? Praise God. Amen. It happened to Joseph when he was thrown into prison. Joseph went to prison because he had a dream from God. He had a promise from God. And, uh, and, and it cost him a lot of trouble until he had his breakthrough. Amen. Until he got pulled up out of that dungeon for the last time and got set at the right hand of Pharaoh, amen. And he's seen his family saved during a famine because of it. And God gave him the richest soil of Egypt for the entire Hebrew family, Goshen, amen, to raise their sheep and to, and to live, amen. It happened to Moses when he led the children of Israel across the Red Sea. You know, he had, he had his challenges, before God parted the waters, that was his first breakthrough, amen. There was a whole lot of trouble up to that point. He had to stare Pharaoh's armies down, amen. He had, to, he had to look the people that he was trying to save in the eye while they were murmuring and talking against him and say, stand still, amen. God's going to make a way, and, uh, and, and God did make a way. And, um, it happened to Joshua when he was told to encircle Jericho for seven days. You know, seven days. He's going to walk around Jericho with no weapons, just some trumpets. And he told the people, he said, whatever you do, seven days, don't you say a word until we start praising. Amen. And they had their breakthrough. And when they had their breakthrough, the walls of Jericho came down. Amen. And they had their breakthrough. God parted the, the, the waters of the Jordan. And then he, bro he broke down the walls of Jericho. And then he brought down the giants. Amen. But, but in every one of these instances that they had their breakthrough, there was always this, this, this moment of trouble where it looked like they were at the end of the road. And God said, step out in the water. He said, I'm not going to part the Jordan till you get your feet in it. Amen. So a lot of times we've got to be willing to just step out there in faith before you're going to see the breakthrough. Because if you stand on the backside of the Jordan, amen, the enemy's going to just keep coming at you and trying to wear you down. But when you make that next step, amen, and you break through that one thing that's been holding you back, amen, whatever it's been that's been holding you back, and you make that one more step, and you make that breakthrough, amen, there's blessing on the other side. Amen. Amen. It happened to Daniel when he was put in the den with the lions. It happened to Elijah when he challenged the prophets of Baal. Amen. It happened to Stephen when he was being stoned to death for preaching the truth. It happened to Paul 
during many hardships and imprisonments. It happened to you and me at various times in our lives as well. That we've had challenging times. We've had problems and situations that were coming at us that would seem to maybe weight you down to the point where you couldn't go any farther. But faith, amen, and the Holy Ghost stirred up in you, amen. And God made that breakthrough. And when you got through to the other side, there was blessing. You got to the other side, there was an additional faith, amen. That's what Paul was saying when he said, we live by faith to faith, amen. From faith to faith. He could have said, from breakthrough to breakthrough. <laughs> amen. I'd rather tell you about my breakthroughs and my blessings and my trials, my tribulations and my troubles. Amen. Major keys of faith. Key number one, we must have a thorough understanding of submission and authority. A lot of people would wonder, you know, why is it that for some miracles, you know, it's like God told somebody to make, you know, get some mud and he spit in it, he put it in his eyes and he said, go wash in a pool of shalom. And then he was, his eyes were opened, you know. And then there was people though, like the centurion that said, Lord, you don't even need to go to my house. Just say the prayer and I know that it'll be healed. And God healed, God healed his servant and he didn't do nothing. Well, the reason being, and even with this centurion, Jesus said, whoa, I've never seen any kind of faith like this in Israel. And you know what it was? What God saw, what Jesus saw in him was submission. That's what made the difference. You can put that down in your Bible because submission will save you a lot of hard work. Amen? It'll save you a lot of unnecessary trouble. I'm not saying that if you're submitted, you won't have trouble, but it'll save, it'll cut about half of it out of your life. Submission to authority. Matthew 8 and 9. This is what the guy says to Jesus. For I also am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this one, go, and he goes, and to another, come, and he comes, and to my servant, do this, and he does it. And when Jesus heard it, he marveled. And said to those who followed, surely, I say unto you, I've not found this kind of faith in Israel before. God knew, Jesus knew that for this man to have that kind of authority, he had had to have been subjected to authority. And he was understanding the principle when he told Jesus, he said, I'm not worthy for you to come under my house. But if you'll just say the word, I know my servant will be healed. There is submission. Now, to me, submission has two elements, humility, and it is a um, surrendering to authority. It's a combination. I don't think you can have one without the other. But this is what, this is what caused Jesus to say, I've never seen any kind of faith like this in all of Israel. And he's talking to a centurion. And um, so the Bible's full of these kind of examples. Abraham's obedience when he offers up Isaac, you know, that was submission. And uh, Moses' obedience and submission to God's authority when he was told to stretch the rod out over the sea. You know, he did what, 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 what Jesus said, or did what God said. And uh, it, we see it over and over, Elijah and and. Uh, and this man named Naaman, Naaman was a leper, and uh, Naaman was required to go all the way to the Jordan River and dip himself seven times in that muddy river before God would heal his leprosy. And Naaman was mad because Elijah didn't even come out himself. He sent his servant and told him, hey, this is what the man of God said. Go, go to the Jordan and dip yourself seven times. And he's like, man, there's a, the Jordan. Are you kidding me? And, and he's like, you know, uh, I would at least expect the man of God to come out here and lay his hands on me and say a certain prayer. And he's like, no, you need to do what, what he said. And he went away angry. But then he came to his senses 
And he went and he dipped himself seven times in that muddy Jordan and God healed him of his leprosy. For some people, God has to work the pride out of you before he can get you the breakthrough that you need to have the blessings to expand his kingdom. And Naaman was a man with a lot of pride. He was very proud, even for a leper. And um, God was working that out of him. But obviously the key here is being under Christ's authority and lordship. And um, we need to... We need to be under that authority and lordship, having respect for your elders, having respect for um, uh, law officers even, and even government officials, Um, having respect for your pastor, teachers in the church, having respect for the house of God, uh, having a reverence for the things of God. I I personally never bring my cell phone through that door uh, in a service unless if I got a guest speaker coming for the first time, he don't know how to find this place or, you know, but for me, this is why I do this, okay? It's not to be better than anybody, but I have a personal reverence for the things of God. I've learned that the more humble and submitted I am, the more reverence I have for the things of God, the more authority I have when I need it. Does that make sense? Amen. You you, you can position yourself in authority by being under authority. And reverence or fear of the Lord is part of that. Um, key number two, we must worship the Lord with reverence. And uh, Matthew 8, 1 through 3 says, And when he had come down from the mountain, great multitudes followed him, and behold, a leper came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if you're willing, can you make me clean? And then Jesus put out his hand and touched him, saying, I am willing, be cleansed. And immediately this leper was cleansed. So the word worship here means to prostate oneself. And, 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 you know, there's times in worship where we need to get on our knees. And, and there's something very humbling about, about kneeling down. And, uh, you know, I've seen my bishop when he was getting really old, and it was hard for him to walk. And I seen him get down on his knees and pray for an hour. And I knew that he was in pain doing it. I seen um, Brother Dale Short, 90 years old getting on his knees and praying for an hour in the Holy Ghost. I used to love to get between those two men in in the basement of the Wood River Church and and pray. And um, there was something very powerful about their prayers because their faith and their obedience and their submission to God, their reverence and fear of the Lord, uh, brought a sort of kind of faith that was emanating from them. And uh, you couldn't be in that presence and not be affected by that. Amen. Um, The key number three is being convinced of Jesus' ability and what you believe. It's it's good to know what you know, but you got to know why you know what you know. You know? You know what I know? (laughs) Amen. You know, being in relationship with God is, is... very, very important. You'll have a hard time maintaining that without without sound doctrinal truths. Because Jesus is the Word. He was the Word made flesh. And uh, God put His Word above His name. So it's important to know the doctrines and know the Scriptures. You know, can you point to where the Bible would talk about the, you know, because there's a lot of people, oh, well, you know, I was, I had some guy named John Jones saved me in 1972 and they're smoking a cigarette and taking medication and drinking beer. And they're saying, yeah, I was saved 20 years ago by some guy. I said a sinner's prayer. Well, do you know where to go in scripture to to show people that once saved, always saved is not the truth. Do you know where to show people in Scripture that water baptism washes away your sins? It's when the blood of Jesus is applied 
And, and, and it's a separate act of God filling you with the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. And you show that in Scripture. Can you point it to somebody in the book? And these are important things, amen. If you're going to be effective in the kingdom of God and release your faith, it's got to be in the word. Faith cometh by hearing, hearing the word of God. So if you really want to have strong faith, you've got to know the word because if you don't know the word, you can't speak the word. And if you can't speak the word, there's some situations you won't get your breakthrough. Amen. I'm trying to give you some keys here today. Um, we have to be convinced of Jesus' ability. And, and by knowing the word of God, you know the promises of God. And so God can do anything that his word says. And he'll do it by faith. And faith works by love. And faith comes by hearing the word. So you got the word comes to the person and in your heart. And that word goes out by faith. Amen. Romans 4 and 20 says, He did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God, and being fully convinced that what he had promised, he was able to perform, and therefore it was accounted to him for righteousness. And Paul's releasing this, this third key of faith here. It's knowing the word, believing the word, releasing the word. Amen? I got a lot of, I could read a lot of scriptures for what I just told you. Um, but I want to keep moving on here. Uh, key number four is press in regardless of the obstacles. And this is really important for everybody right now because, you know, I can recognize when there's people going through a lot of different things. And I know it right now that there, there are many of you and many of you that are not here tonight that are going through some challenges. But, you know, this is where you, you've got two choices. You can You can just... Throw in the towel and let and let and let the enemy talk you out of some things. Or you can just pray and press through and release your faith in the word of God and get your breakthrough, amen. Because there's blessing on the other side. Amen. Um you cannot let circumstances stop your faith. Let's let let adverse situations be confirmation to release your faith, that there's something on the other side. You know, it's hope. Hope was, is what holds you until faith brings it into reality. So hope, and we hope in the Word of God, when we know the Word of God, we can hope in it, and we can trust in it until we get that moment where we release it and we get that breakthrough, amen. Um. 2 Corinthians 4, 8, and 9. We are hard-pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. And Paul's writing to the Corinthian church, and he's saying, hey, this is pretty much how I live my life. <laughs> and every challenge for Paul was, was an opportunity for a breakthrough, amen? Every problem that he had, it was, it was an opportunity for a breakthrough, for blessing. Before there was revival on the island of Malta, he had to have a shipwreck, right? And, and after a shipwreck, what happens? He's freezing with soaking wet, and he's trying to build a fire, and he, he gets bit by a deadly viper, and he shakes it off in the fire. And the people that are there, there's like, oh, he must have been a murderer. He got bit by a viper, and God just judged him. And uh, then, of course, we know the story. Paul didn't die. But he got to preach revival, and a whole island had revival. But before there was a revival, there was a whole lot of trouble, right? There was a whole lot of resistance, a Eurocyclodon. There was there was all kinds of trouble aboard the ship, and and uh, but there was but Paul understood the principles by this time. He was seasoned, and he knew, Amen, that when trouble was hitting, that it was time to pray, it was time to fast, it was time to hope. And, and believe God to finish what he started. Amen. 
2 Corinthians 4.16, Therefore, we do not lose heart, even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. See, this is why it's so important to get renewed in the Holy Ghost, friends, because if you're not praying in the Holy Ghost every day, the, everything else that I'm preaching and teaching you today, you might as well just throw it out the window. It's not going to work. You need the renewing of the Holy Ghost renews your mind, it renews your spirit, it renews your heart, it renews your thinking, amen. When you stay connected to the vine, you're going to have that life supplying water flowing, that rivers of living water that Jesus said springing up into eternal life. This is the rest which causeth the weary to rest, amen. This is the refreshing, amen. You've got to have the refreshing of the Holy Ghost. You've got to have that that it's not just alone time with Jesus. It is that, but it's so much more than that. You know, half the planet's having alone time with God, okay? I'm talking about praying in the Holy Ghost. I'm talking about the Spirit of God moving through you in such a way that it's renewing your heart and renewing your mind and bringing you to a place. Stir, Paul said, stir up the gift that is in you, amen. Stir it up. Stir up that gift of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. And uh, another example of, of a key for releasing your faith and living faith to faith is persistence in humility. Being humbly persistent. You know, when I was in school, um, I guess somewhere around sixth grade, I got tired of getting picked on all the time. And, uh, I, by this time I was kind of falling away from God and, and, uh, I decided to just take my dad's philosophy and start fighting back. And, um, you know, after about three or four good fights, the people stopped picking on me. And, um, there was one guy out on the playground. He wasn't very big. I don't even remember his name right now at this second, but I remember one thing. He, he wasn't that great a fighter, but he would never quit. You'd had to kill that guy to get him to leave you alone. If you, if you, he wouldn't bother anybody. He didn't pick on nobody, but if you picked a fight with him, he, I don't care how hard you hit this guy, how many times you hit him, if he was conscious, he was getting back up and he was coming at you. And for that reason, people were like, you know what? I'm just going to not going to mess with him. See, the devil knows if he can wear you down on some certain things. If he can wear you down on your church attendance, he'll do it for the rest of your life. If he can wear you down from, from praying in the Holy Ghost every day, he'll do it. He'll do it. He'll let you go around walking around. The devil don't care if you're walking around and you don't have living water coming out. He could care less. You're no threat. Amen. Persistence and humility. And a good example of this is, is a Gentile woman in Matthew 15. And um, this woman was commended by Jesus for having great faith. And um, what it was what was it about her faith that was so great it was her persistent attitude that got jesus attention she continued to plead her case with humility after jesus uh didn't respond the way that she wanted to matthew 15 and 27 and she said true lord yet even the little dogs eat the crumbs which fall from their master's table and then jesus had answered and said unto her o woman great is your faith now, remember, he'd already told her no a couple times. O woman, great is your faith. Let it be so unto you as you desire. And her daughter was healed from that very hour. It was her humble persistence. You know, I don't think there's anything that I wouldn't do for somebody that's being humble and persistent. But I've had people recently that I've done things and helped and and. You know, they were, it, this is what happens when you don't drink that living water. It'll change your mind. It'll change your attitude. It'll change your spirit. And, you know, when people that you've helped time and time and time again, and they, they, they're just not in love with the truth and they're not in love with living water, they're, 
It doesn't matter how much you do for them. If they don't appreciate the truth and they don't appreciate the presence of God, they're not going to appreciate anything you do. Eventually, they will turn and they will attack you. And there's, you know, and it might seem harsh, but there's some people you, you just, you can't help. You got to pray for them and you got to believe for them. But there's some people you have to protect yourself. And um, so that's not in my notes, but um, the other key is confessing and acting on your faith, you know. Being willing to, to, you know, and you pray for something, if you're willing to do something about it, and God sees you're willing to do something about it. We we pray for our loved ones, and we want to see them saved. And a lot of times the opportunity will come to do something really that you don't want to do. But it may be the key that God is offering for that person to be saved. And, and, and just about always, it's going to take you stepping out of that comfort zone. You know, when we pray for people to be saved, we have to be willing to uh, assist in whatever, taking them by the hand to pull them up back up out of that pit. And uh, confessing and acting upon your faith. 2 Corinthians 4.13, but since we have the same spirit of faith, According to what is written, I believe, therefore I spoke. We also believed, and therefore we speak. And and this is the spirit of faith that he's saying, that it's when you really truly believe the Word of God, and, and you speak it in adversity. As soon as the, 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 the adversity hits you, as soon as a bad report hits you, that's the time to speak the Word of faith. I've walked in hospital rooms to pray for people, and immediately when I stepped into the room, I could feel 15 words of negativity that has already been prophesied. And the, and, and the first thing you got to do is you got to bind all that, and you got to rebuke all that, and then you got to loose the word of faith. Life, the power of life and, do- and death is in the tongue. Amen. Don't don't let uh, don't buy into any of the devil's tactics or lies. Don't confess that. Amen. Confess and speak the word of God into those situations. Um. So I want to get to the, the the final part of my message today here, and what I'm really talking about is is faith without borders. And. Um, it's not a long message. I'm not far from being done here, but and I believe that God wants to take us to a deeper dimension in our faith here tonight. And uh, Joshua chapter one and three, every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses. So God had also told Abraham the same thing. And um, if you ever want to know why Israel is this tiny little nation, it's because Abraham, he could have and should have kept on walking. Because if he'd kept on walking, he'd had half of Africa too, amen? Now, they've lost some of it in wars and things like that. But God said, wherever you tread the sole of your feet, that's, that's where I'm going to, that's where I'm going to, I'm going to give it to you. I'm going to give you dominion. He said that in the New Testament concerning spirits, principalities, that he would put it all under our feet, that we would tread upon those. Amen? And uh, and that's in the spiritual sense. In Ephesians 3 and 20, um, it says, Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. That word power is dunamis, and it means it means um, power through the Holy Ghost. It means miraculous works. It means a force from God. It means energy from God, and that is in the Holy Ghost. So now, when you have the Holy Ghost, the Bible says in Jude, it says praying in the Holy Ghost, building up your faith. 
So one of the ways to build your faith is, is by staying prayed up in the Holy Ghost. I know the first time that I spoke in tongues was a breakthrough for my faith like I'd never had before. Yeah, I trusted in God. Yeah, I believed his word was true, or I wouldn't have been praying and asking for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. But I'm going to tell you, when cloven tongues of fire lit up on this dude, I'm going to tell you, my faith went to a whole different dimension. Amen. I knew that I had something from heaven inside my bosom. Amen. And I was ready to release it. I was ready to exercise that immediately. Amen. Honestly, at that moment, I there wasn't you, you couldn't have convinced me that there is nothing God couldn't do. And I you couldn't have convinced me there was nothing God wouldn't do for me. Amen. When I got filled with the Holy Ghost. I think that's part of why it's so important to know the Word of God and to know what you have received. I know people that's got the Holy Ghost and they were on cloud nine, and the next day they were all preaching about once saved, always saved, and smoking marijuana again because they didn't know what they had got. They didn't know what they received. They didn't know how precious and how powerful it is. And um, But God is always looking for faith. Faith is like a supernatural Wi-Fi that breaks through the natural realm, into the supernatural realm, and pulls back the things in heaven that God wants to release on earth. I mean, that's one way of looking at it. It's something that's emanating. Once you have the Holy Ghost and you believe the Word of God, you've got, you, you've got a generator of faith that's in you. Now, faith worketh by love. And that's why, you know, whatever we do for God, we got to do it out of the love of God. Otherwise. You know, when you get to heaven and, well, didn't I prophesy? Didn't I do this and do that? He's like, depart from me. You're a worker of iniquity. I never knew you. Faith worketh by love. And, and, and if it's done that way, you're never going to seek your own glory. You're never going to say, oh, look what I did. Look at me. It's not about us. It's about him. Amen? But um, Dynamite's used for moving mountains. It's move, It's used to carve out highways, and it even uh, to mine out precious resources like metal and gold, silver. Um, they use they use dynamite to um, do these things, and uh, you can blast your way through some boundaries. Amen. Sometimes that's what we got to do. You got to blast your way through some boundaries. And there's no other way but just getting in on your knees and praying in the Holy Ghost until your whole prayer dimension changes, amen, and you feel that that breakthrough is, is breaking through the resistance. It's breaking through the forces, the things that are trying to stop you from receiving the blessings of God, amen. And uh, because all of hell can see, but when things come down from heaven, the third heaven, it's got to pass through the second heaven. And that's, the Bible says, that's where Satan has his dominion right now. And he can see those blessings coming. And he, every time he'll try to, he'll try to put up this front and make you think that everything's going backwards. Like everything you're praying for, everything you're hoping for, like there's no hope for it. He wants to steal the hope. Amen. But you see, we don't get our hope from the circumstances that we see with a natural eye. We get our hope from the Word of God and our trust and confidence in Him, praying in the Holy Ghost, and we get our breakthrough, amen. We break through the natural circumstances. We break through the false reports. We break through, amen, into what hell heaven sees it. Heaven's got a different point of view about your situation, amen. Your trouble and your trial, amen, from heaven's point of view, it's a testimony, amen. It's not, it's not your death. It's not the end of the road. It's not the end amen, a burying in circumstances, amen, it's just, it's just obstacles, it's just, it's just fluff, amen, it's just the devil trying to make you think that you're not going to have that breakthrough, that you're not going to have that revival, that you're not going to have those resources and those blessings, amen, but if faith goes beyond what the eye sees, faith goes beyond the natural senses, faith breaks through the carnal realm, Faith breaks through the darkness. Faith breaks through into heaven's regions. Amen. Faith sends out a praise in the midnight hour. Faith sends out a praise in the middle of the trouble. Faith sends out a praise in the middle of your battle. Amen. Faith brings back the things that God wishes. 
and wants to release in your life. Amen. Praise God. Amen. <laughs> in Acts chapter 10, Peter comes up against some big boundaries. <laughs> He's taking a nap. And while he's taking a nap, there's some Gentile named Cornelius, and he's praying and fasting and has a vision. And, 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 and uh, in his vision, he's praying for more of God. And uh, the, the angel says, send your servants and tell Peter to come to your house. He didn't tell Cornelius to go to church. He said, go send your servant and have the preacher come give you a home Bible study. So here's Cornelius' servant running to see Peter. Peter is having a snooze. He's taking a nap. In the middle of his nap, God drops down this sheet, and all these unclean animals are coming out. God's trying to give Peter a bacon sandwich. Peter, kill and eat. Get you a bacon sandwich, Peter. Not so, Lord. No unclean animal has ever touched my lips. Peter, you have no idea how wonderful bacon is. And Peter needed a breakthrough through his boundary. Peter had a boundary, amen. That boundary was the law of the Old Testament, but Jesus was there that day for a breakthrough and a bacon sandwich. And uh, <laughs> he says, kill and eat, Peter. Kill and eat. And... Uh, so anyhow, you know the story, and Peter goes to Cornelius' house, preaches Christ crucified, Christ risen, Holy Ghost falls, they all begin to speak in other tongues as God baptizes them in the Spirit. Then he commands them to be baptized in the name of Jesus. Now this is the first time in Scripture where Gentiles are born again. Now. You know, if you notice here, just like every other instance, Peter didn't go there and preach to him and then say, now, now you're saved. <laughs> he said, repent and be baptized in Jesus' name. Receive the Holy Ghost. That was the, that was the pattern all the way through. That's obeying the gospel. God always finishes what he starts. But um, Peter needed a breakthrough to get that gospel into the Gentiles. And then again, in Acts chapter 9, we see Saul, before his name was Paul, runs into his barrier. And his barrier on the road to Damascus is Jesus Christ himself as a blinding light. And his barrier blinded him, and he turned and he went back into the city of Damascus. And in Acts chapter 9, he goes back blinded, led by the hand, into Damascus, and God speaks to a man named Ananias. And he says, Ananias, I want you to go visit Saul. And he, by the way, I'm going to change his name to Paul. But I want you to go, in verse 16, for I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. And some people are like, oh, I want to go to a church. Where they speak encouraging stories about life. <laughs> They're lucky Jesus ain't preaching to them. <laughs> Amen. He says, go and tell Paul what he must suffer for my name's sake. And Ananias went his way, and he entered into the house, and putting his hands on him, said, Brother Saul, the Lord, even Jesus, said, appeared unto thee in the way, and came, hath sent me, that thou might receive sight, and be filled with the Holy Ghost. And immediately there fell from his eyes, as it had been scales, and he received his sight forthwith, and arose, and was baptized. Now, isn't that amazing, that in these breakthroughs that we see for the preacher and for the lost, that there's a new birth that takes place every time. Amen. Now in Acts chapter 16, Paul and Silas are trying to preach the gospel. And um, they've come into the city, and for days they're not having any results at all. And there's this woman, 
and she's demon possessed with a demon named Python, and she's following him around, and she's crying out real loud to everybody, these are the men of truth, and they will show you to the way and listen to them. Which what she was saying was true, but she had a bad, she had the wrong spirit. And trust me, there's a lot of people going around saying the truth, but they've got a wrong spirit. And that was not the Holy Ghost. In fact, it says that uh, Paul cast that devil out of her. And when he did, uh, it made her, her, she had a business of being a soothsayer and her business partners got really mad because now she couldn't read palms and, and tea leaves and all that other mess. And uh, the Bible says that they beat them and they threw them into prison and they put stocks on their feet. And um, the Bible says in the midnight hour, uh, Paul and Silas prayed and they sang praises to God and the prisoners heard them. They were filling that whole jail. Here they are beaten, bloody, and the stocks on their feet, and they're in the dungeon part of the prison, and, and they begin to praise God in the midnight hour. And the power of praise in the middle of their problems, amen, was very effective because the Bible says that the earth shook and quaked. It said that every prison door swung open, and the bonds and the shackles and the chains fell off every single prisoner, amen. And they, and they were getting ready to walk out, and that Philippian jailer was about to fall on his sword, and Paul stopped him, and he said, what are you doing? He said, well, I'd rather die on my sword because they would crucify him, those prisoners getting out. He said, nobody's going to get hurt today. He said, what shall I do then? He said, we're going to go to your house and have a Bible study. So Paul, and you can read this in, in Acts chapter 16, Paul takes this man back to his house, has a Bible study, and in verse 30, it says, and brought them out and said, sirs, what must we do to be saved? And uh, of course, Paul baptizes the whole household. And what's really awesome about this, this Philippian jailer and his whole household, later from Rome, Paul would write an epistle to the church in Philippi. <laughs> but before it was a church, there had to be some breakthroughs. There was some spirits that had to be pulled down. There was some, there was some suffering that had to take place from those, those men. They had to leave some skin in the dirt, if you will. Amen? And give a praise in the midnight hour. You see, the greatest blessings can come after the greatest challenges in your life. Some of the things that you thought were just going to kill you, things that were, could seem to try to destroy your reputation, seem to bring you down to a place where you couldn't even breathe. Amen. It's in those times and in those places, amen, that your praise is the most powerful. It's a sacrifice of praise. And what it does is it, it breaks the faith through Satan's final uh, front line. Now, I guess you guys thought I was going to teach and preach all night, but I'm going to close up with this from 1 Chronicles 4 and 9. And um, this is actually a prayer. And I'm going to read this passage, and then I'm just going to ask you guys to pray with me. 1 Chronicles 4 and 9. This is a prayer of Jabez. And Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. And his mother called his name Jabez, saying, because I bear him with sorrow. Now, Jabez means pain. Can you imagine this guy going through his whole life? Hey, pain, come here. What a depressing thought. And the the Bible tells us that his mother bore him with sorrow. And... After I don't know how long of this poor guy walking around with this this a name a man named Pain. It says in verse ten, and Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, "Oh, that thou would bless me indeed and enlarge my borders." I'm going to tell you something. I prayed this prayer in 2015. 
with every bit of faith that God had ever given me. And my life changed forever. My ministry changed forever. Everything changed. This prayer still works. Would you stand with me for a moment? He says,